Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to share my full review of the Xiaomi Pad 7. I've been using it for the last couple of months now. I have posted a bunch of videos on it. Now it's time for the full review. Also, do note this is my Xiaomi Pad 7, which I purchased with my own money. I do not make sponsored videos on this channel, so please consider hitting that subscribe button as creating independent videos like this costs me a lot of money. So your support is much appreciated. All right, with that said, let's get going. Now, I also have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 powered Galaxy Tab S9 base model. And in this video, I will compare the Xiaomi Pad 7 with my Tab S9 just for context. The Tab S9 is a lot more expensive, more than double the cost of the Pad 7. Although I bought the Tab S9 at just 40,000 rupees on sale. All right, let's start with the build and design. So not much has changed on the Pad 6. It still feels solid, all metal quad studio speakers. There are some contact pins on the back to connect to Xiaomi's keyboard case. It's just that the aspect ratio has changed and it feels a lot more squared off due to the three by two aspect ratio. The Pad 7 does not have a fingerprint scanner. I don't know why. Is it really that expensive to add a capacitive fingerprint scanner on the power button? I don't know. It also lacks a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. That's not surprising. But what I really don't like and I will continue complaining about is the lack of micro SD card support. On a tablet, which I consider as an entertainment device or productivity device, having access to storage expansion using a micro SD card is really helpful. Storing local media, storing game ROMs for emulation, the micro SD card really comes in handy. My Tab S9 has a micro SD card slot and so does my S20 FE 5G, which is why I continue to use them. Compared to my Tab S9, the Pad 7 is actually quite a bit thicker and heavier. Although it's definitely not unwieldy, but I don't recommend watching videos on it while you are laying down holding the tablet over your face. Okay, next up, let's talk about the display. Now this is still a regular IPS display, no mini LED backlight or anything like that. Obviously you cannot expect that for 30,000 rupees. This display is a 10 bit panel and is definitely a lot brighter than the Pad 6 for sure. The resolution is very high, super sharp at around 3.2K and refresh rate is typically 120 Hz and can go up to 144 Hz in games. The screen is really good for reading. The Pad 7 also supports Asia 10 and Dolby Vision video playback on Netflix. Although the thing is, this is an IPS panel. It's really not capable of providing that HDR impact due to the lack of required contrast. Some people on YouTube vaguely state that the Pad 7 display is like an OLED display and no, it's not close. I compared to my Galaxy Tab S9 which has an OLED display and it is not even close. Also, because the screen has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, there are bigger black bars when watching 16 by 9 content and because of the IPS glow, those black bars look a bit distracting to me because I am used to OLED displays. I am not hating on this display. This is as good as it gets in this price range, but I am also not going to overhype this display like some others. Just keeping it real. The audio output from the Quad Studio speakers is very good. It supports Dolby Atmos and the sound is clean and full with decent bass. Not much to complain about. That being said, I feel my Tab S9, despite being a thinner tablet, does have better speakers than the Pad 7. The Tab S9 feels even fuller with deeper bass. The Pad 7, just like the Pad 6, features a USB 3.2 Gen 1 5 gigabits per second Type C port that allows for pretty high speed data transfer back and forth between the Pad and external storage media.
Next, let's talk about performance. The Xiaomi Pad 7 is powered by the fantastic 7 Plus Gen 3 processor, which is like a top of the line mid range SoC from Qualcomm. It also packs 12GB of LPDDR5X RAM along with 256GB of UFS 4.0 storage. Do note that the 120GB variant is of UFS 3.1 variety, just like my Tab S9. Here are some benchmarks of the Pad 7 compared to my 8 Gen 2 powered Galaxy Tab S9. And as you can see here, in terms of the CPU, they are quite close. 8 Gen 2 is just around 10% faster. The Adreno 740 GPU, however, is significantly faster by around 25% compared to the Adreno 732. However, when it comes to sustained performance, the Pad 7 does a better job, a much better job compared to my Tab S9. I guess that's the advantage of being a thicker device. I have also noticed that the Pad 7 does a far better job dissipating the heat across the tablet compared to my Tab S9, which not only gets hotter quicker, but is also unable to dissipate the heat as effectively as the Pad 7. On my Tab S9, the heat is much more concentrated around a smaller region compared to the Pad 7. That being said, the Tab S9 even after throttling under unrealistic benchmark stress is still on par with the Pad 7. It's because the Adreno 740 is simply more performant and more efficient than the Snapdragon 732. It needs less power to do the same amount of work as the 7 Plus Gen 3. Overall, the Pad 7 has very good gaming performance for its price. Apart from some poorly optimized games, the Pad 7 does a commendable job both in Android gaming as well as high-end emulation. I have made videos on high-end native Android games as well as high-end emulation on the Pad 7. Go check it out, link in the cards as well as in the description. Let's talk about note-taking then. Actually, I'm sorry, but I cannot talk about the note-taking experience on the Pad 7 because I couldn't test it. Here's why. I guess it's my fault for assuming, but Xiaomi should also be more clear as well. So, I am not really a huge digital note taker, so I didn't purchase the latest Xiaomi Focus Pen. I thought I could just borrow my friend's Xiaomi second gen pen and test it on the Pad 7. Turns out it does not work. The Pad 7 is not compatible with the Xiaomi second gen pen and you need to buy the Focus Pen which costs the same as the old pen. So if you are someone who is planning to sell the Pad 6 to get the Pad 7, make sure to sell your old pen as well as it is not compatible with the Pad 7. That said, I had zero complaints regarding note taking experience on the Pad 6 when I reviewed it. So the Pad 7 with the new focus pen which has doubled the pressure sensitivity should be even better especially for digital art. Finally, let's talk about software. The Pad 7 is running HyperOS 2 for pads based on Android 15. Now, HyperOS 2 for pads is not as feature rich or customizable as HyperOS 2 for phones but to be honest, I don't really care about customization on a tablet. Still there's some decent lock screen design options, some nice wallpapers. The main thing is that the UI feels really smooth, no matter what you are doing. The Pad 6 was also pretty smooth but it did have some stutters here and there. But the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 3 with 12GB of RAM and UFS 4 storage means the Pad 7's UI performance is really fast and smooth. I also like the multitasking gestures, you know, split screen multitasking, uh, pop-up windows and the Pad 7 does not stutter while juggling between all these apps, keeps up really well. But I also do have some complaints about HyperOS 2 for pads. For example, the bottom dock does not have an all apps button. I complained about it on HyperOS 1 as well. So I need to swipe from the edge to go into split screen mode and, and then choose the app that I want to open in split screen. This is of course if I don't have the app on the dock. On one UI, there is an all apps button which makes the split screen experience a bit more seamless in my opinion. The Pad 7 also does not allow all apps to be opened in split screen which is a bit annoying. Like I can't open Netflix in the split screen for some reason whereas it does open on my Tab S9. The HyperOS 2 for Pad also lacks a side panel for quick access to certain apps or for app pairs. Having an edge panel is just a much more seamless experience for split screen action.
Although on HyperOS 2, you can save app pairs on the home screen for quick launching. That said, there are some nifty features as well. For example, the Pad 7 allows you to use it as a portable hotspot or in this case as a Wi-Fi extender, even though it does not have a SIM card. My Tab S9 Wi-Fi model does not allow this. The Pad 7 also allows you to manually switch the screen's color gamut where you can switch between P3 and sRGB color space. The Pad 7 also offers a screen recorder that can record up to 90 FPS. I have never seen this feature on any other device. You can also use the Pad 7 as a wireless monitor for your PC. My biggest complaint regarding the Pad 7 or HyperOS 2 in general is that there is still no official external desktop mode. The Pad 6 and Pad 7 both feature USB 3.2 Gen 1 5GB per second Type-C ports with DisplayPort Alt mode to be able to connect to external monitors over HDMI or DisplayPort. But you are just limited to screen mirroring, which just sucks in my opinion. An external desktop mode will enable the Pad 7 to do true multitasking where you can open reference materials on the large screen and use your Pad 7 for note taking on art or whatever. Samsung DeX is the only reason that I still consider using Samsung despite all their anti-consumer practices. I don't understand why these brands don't see the potential in an external desktop mode. Xiaomi, please please consider developing an external desktop mode it would add so much value to both pad 6 and pad 7 owners finally regarding battery life and charging i don't have any concrete numbers for this that's because i use it i leave it for a couple of days i get back to it use it a bit more and then i plug it in at night sometimes i don't have any pattern i don't have any hard numbers of battery life but it's never been an issue for me the Pad 7 does come with a 45 watt charger in the box, unlike my much more expensive Tab S9, which does not come with a charger. Alright guys, that was my review for the Pad 7. I did review the Pad 6 last year and I did get a good amount of views on that. And the Pad 7 just builds on top of it. Uh, it still has those weaknesses as the Pad 6, like no external desktop mode and some of the limitations of HyperOS 2. But overall, in terms of performance, it's a huge leap over the Pad 6. The Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 3 is truly a star. And overall, the Pad 7 just continues to give us great value for money. So do let me know what you think about the Pad 7. Do you have it? Are you planning to purchase it? Or are you planning to purchase anything else? Please make sure to hit like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.